Hello. Today's uh, lesson, uh, we are going to talk about uh, media messages, and um, I will talk about uh, the uh, main concepts of the messages and discuss the structure of the messages and uh, give you a couple of examples. You need to know how they work. You don't need to memorize all of them. Of course, nobody does uh, need to do that, um, but uh, you need to understand the concepts and be able to look at a media message and look at the table and figure out what it is, okay? So the basic concept is, concept is um, it is an a instruction, an instruction, and such as you know, for example, play a note. So let me give you another example that is a real world um, uh, example. Uh, let's say that I uh, have a student here in this class that um, is called Joe, and then I say, uh, Joe, open the book. So um, this is very clear. Uh, clearly an instruction and I will tell Joe to do something everybody will hear that but only Joe will open the book because I say his name uh, in the beginning so the meeting message is something like that um, is an instruction so, 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 uh, like, like this one uh, Joe opened the book but uh, it's a little different it's of course for example play a note we play a particular note on a keyboard and uh, another device plays the note the correspondent of uh, the student, you know, Joe, would be the MIDI channel that we also discussed a little um, uh, uh, last week. Uh, the MIDI channel would be the device that uh, will respond to that message. For example, everybody heard the instruction, but only Joe opened the book. Uh, the same thing about the MIDI message. If I send a MIDI message with a particular uh, MIDI channel, uh, then only the device that has that MIDI channel will execute that message. So it's obviously in binary format and it's usually in three bytes and each byte, as you know, is a little word of eight bits and uh, that's why also it's very important for us to understand the hexadecimal system. But from those eight bits, only seven uh, we use for the information. The first one is for something else that I will discuss very soon. So if I only have seven, I have 128 possibilities, or I can represent numbers from zero to 127. So a typical media message uh, is like this. You know, let's say that we have um, uh, uh, a uh, byte of information like that, but usually it's three bytes. It can be only one, but it can also be three. And uh, usually the first one is called the status byte. And the status byte is, uh, we know is a status byte because it starts with a one. It's called the most significant bit, MSB, all the way to the left is one. And then the other ones are the data bytes, which you start with a zero, okay? So when you see a group of bytes like this and one of them starts with a one, you know that it's a status byte and the other ones are the, the start with zero, they are data bytes. And I will understand what this is because the status bytes, this byte is actually the instruction itself. And the data bytes are the ones that uh, carry the information about that. And uh, we'll see an example uh, now. For example, if I have this media message that you see there on the top, okay, there is one status byte and two data bytes. The first one, uh, is, you know, has the number one, which says is a status byte, and then we have 001, which means this is a note on message. If this is a note on message, it means that uh, I probably played a note in a particular keyboard, keyboard, okay? So 1001 means play a particular note. Now, what's the other four numbers, you know, 0100? If you convert that, uh, you see that uh, that number will represent number five, which is the MIDI channel. So this particular status byte that you see there, 1001 means note on, and the other four uh, binary numbers, 0100, if you convert, will be MIDI channel number five. So what's the next two data bytes? The next two data bytes uh, will tell me two very important pieces of information. One is the note number, because if I say play a note, I need to say what note that is. And as you know, because I have seven uh, bits to represent that, I have all the way to 128 um, uh, possible uh, numbers or notes. 
In this particular case, if you make that conversion, you will see that is node 64 and uh, that is middle C. Okay. Now the next one is another data byte, which is necessary for the node on message, which uh, is um, uh, represents the velocity. And what is the velocity? The velocity is the way MIDI knows the uh, dynamics. If we play piano or forte, okay, uh, soft or strong. So this is what um, uh, this uh, next data byte is. And if you make the conversion the same way that you know how to do it, you get to a number which is 89 in this particular case, uh, which is, you know, between 0 and 127, uh, which is, you know, something like uh, maybe 40, uh, you know, not the, the, the middle dynamics, not, not also the strongest one, which would be 127. Okay, so this is the example of a MIDI message, the most important one, note on, and carries three pieces of inform information, MIDI channel, note number, and velocity. Now, we have, um, uh, now talking about the, the, in general, the MIDI messages, that was just an example of a MIDI message. I'm going to talk more specifically about the messages now. We have two main categories, which are called channel and system. And each one of those categories also have uh, uh, subcategories, but um, we'll talk about them, uh, you know, uh, one at a time. So channel messages, they always carry a channel number, like the one we just saw. So they related to a device or a virtual instrument. System messages, they communicate some information related to specific devices. And uh, they are a little more complex and uh, we will discuss that in a minute. So let's just imagine that there is those two ma main types, channel and system, and we'll discuss the two uh, one at a time. So the first one is the channel messages. And they also have two categories, two subcategories actually, voice and mode. So the voice messages are the ones that you see in there which we already discussed one of them, which is node on. So node on is the one that plays in a specific note, carries MIDI channel, uh, pitch or note number, and velocity. Node off is exactly the same thing. It says stop playing that particular note. And we also have a couple other ones like the uh, uh, polyphonic key pressure, control change, program change, uh, which means, for example, change the sound from a piano to a flute, something like that. Uh, after touch, which is the pressure after you touch the, the particular um, uh, key, and the pitch band, which is you know that little wheel that uh, bends the um, uh, uh, the pitch. Okay, so those are examples of uh, channel voice messages. Channel mode messages are very important because they can be uh, they have there are four modes: one, two, three, and four, and they are related to what we call omni. If Omni is on, the device will respond to all MIDI channels, okay? Any MIDI channel. So it doesn't matter what MIDI channel is coming in, so it, it, this device will respond. If the Omni is off, that device has to be set to a particular MIDI channel and will respond only to that MIDI channel, okay? So that's what happens to the um, uh, uh, Omni when Omni is off. And in both cases, if the omni is on or off, you can also be in poly or mono uh, modes. And in which case they are kind of obvious, poly is when you, you do polyphonic, uh, of course, several notes at a time, and monophonic is just when you play only one note at a time. So the system messages um, are also have uh, subcategories, and there are three different subcategories in this particular case. Common, real-time, and exclusive. And we are not going to go into a lot of detail on those right now. We will talk about more about those um, later in this course, but to give you just an introduction to that now, the system common messages um, are the ones that are intended for all devices in the system. That's why it's called uh, common messages. And so, for example, there is a MIDI time code, which is a little uh, uh, um, uh, signal that um, is very similar to time codes, um, uh, which uh, gives us information about, for example, the song position pointer. Okay, the song select, which song are we, we playing in the, if we are using a particular sequencer? Where in the song we are, for example, we are in the second bar 
uh, third bit and something like that. So those are all examples of system common messages. System real-time messages uh, are also intended for all devices, okay? But they are more used for synchronization. And they use, for example, the timing clock. The timing clock um, uh, are the pulses per quarter note, uh, which we also call text. So the ones of you who, are, who have been working already with sequencers, uh, you know that's the, the case. So you always see, for example, uh, if you see you know, the most common program that we use, which is Pro Tools, if you see a particular clock, which is um, uh, the um, uh, bars and beats clock, you always see three numbers, bars, beats, and ticks. Okay, there's always the text, which is the number of pulses per quarter note. In the case of Pro Tools, for example, is 960. Okay, there are 960 ticks per quarter note, and uh, which means that, for example, if we are playing a uh, eighth note, uh, that eighth note will have the duration of 480 ticks. Okay, and you also have a couple of other um, uh, messages and, and instructions, such as the start and stop of a sequencer and things like that. The system exclusive uh, are the ones that some um, uh, messages that usually are related to the uh, specific um, uh, information uh, that the manufacturer of the device uh, has. So it's related to time code, MIDI machine control, and all of those things are related to that particular device. Usually we have those messages, we can save messages like that, you know, with a particular state of a, uh, a device and dump it back. That's the, the word that we use, actually, it's a strange word, but uh, that's what we say, dump it back, because we, we, we put these this messages back to the uh, device and restore all of those uh, settings of that particular device. So this is a very basic um, uh, introduction to MIDI messages. Uh, now uh, I will. Um, I hope you will be able to read um, also the um, uh, text uh, that um, uh, talks about the MIDI messages, the, the, the same things that I, I just said. And you also have to look at this particular uh, link in here, which has the all the MIDI messages. As I said, of course, you don't need to memorize this. This is. Uh, absurd. Nobody memorizes this, but you, you need to know a few of them and, and know the, the how they work. So I will ask you in the um, uh, exercises in the tests, you know, this week, that um, you tell me, for example, what this particular message is, and when you know that particular message, what the information is. For example, if it's in old on, what's the MIDI channel, and so on. So you need to use your knowledge of conversion of binary and hexadecimal numbers. Okay. So that's all for now. Uh, go ahead and read the, the um, uh, text and look at this uh, link. And uh, I will see you uh, soon uh, when you take the um, uh, test and the blog for this week. Thank you.